Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do a book review of Nation written by Terry Purchase. This is a fantasy novel classed as children fantasy in particular. It was first published in 2008 and it is not part of the Discord series of which obviously Terry Purchase is very well known for and I've done reviews of every single one of their books at this point. So, what is Nation? In other words, a synopsis of the book. It starts off with the focus being on a small island nation which has its own society which works very well. One day however, a tsunami hits the island and it basically does what you'd expect it to do. It devastates this small low-lying island, kills virtually the entire population with very few exceptions indeed. And one of the very few exceptions is a young boy who obviously is one of the two main characters called Mel. He is at the time of the tsunami hitting on his sort of right of passage um, test essentially to go from being a child to being a man. And he manages to survive because he's a little bit away from the main community. He goes back to the main village, finds everybody he's ever known has died. There's a few very badly injured people he finds eventually but he's the only one who can do any actual serious work and you know, try to sort of keep them um, you know, in food and that sort of thing. So he's in a bad situation, frankly. At the same time that the tsunami hits the island and devastates the island community, in the ocean, not too far away from the island, there is a British Empire ship. This is during the Victorian era. This ship is carrying obviously all the sailors and such, but also carrying some sort of semi sort of medium high up sort of um you know partial sort of semi royalty figures and they were all killed apart from one again and that is a young girl called Daphne she just about manages to survive the ship actually manages to get blasted onto the actual island itself in the middle of a jungle so you got a um, a big British Empire ship in the middle of a jungle on this island. She is basically living on this uh, ship because, well, frankly, she didn't have all the options does she have, and it, the plot starts to go from there. Obviously, Mel and Daphne meet. They don't speak the same language, so there's a bit of a problem there because you know they can just sort of point at things, as is often the case years ago and try to understand each other as best they can both of them are scared I mean they are both still children as well so that's really not gonna help at all you know it's gonna amplify things and they've got to try to understand each other because frankly they're the only two people that can actually do anything a bit more physical on this island so they've got to try to you know sort of survive with food and supplies and shelter They've also got to, you know, help with any other survivors. I mean, they don't have to, but frankly, being the age they are, they're feeling that like they have to, and frankly, they sort of need to because they can't just manage by the two of them furthermore. And it starts to go from there. And the idea of the book is, what would they do, or what would you do, if your world was basically taken away from you and you had to sort of rebuild from nothing? And what would you do to defend that new world that you have to build? That is a question and it's an interesting question. It's an interesting one because of the uh, focus of the book on these two characters. Mel and Daphne are both uh, young um, well, children just coming into being teenagers. They know a certain amount about the world but they are very heavily naive and for the most part ignorant of the wider world. They know certain things but not too much, as you would expect given their age and obviously the year as well. So they have to sort of learn together and figure out how things work. How do for instance, you, you know, get a working food system up? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Daphne's got a certain amount of food that survived from the uh, ship. Now it doesn't have that much. So do they share? They're not sure. And it's a very interesting situation and one that 
is one of many where they have to interact with each other and interact with the other characters because obviously over time all the um, survivors from both the island and other little islands that surround this is this series of little islands in some you know in the Pacific or somewhere you're not really told where exactly just you know a series of little island with people living on them theirs is the biggest island though and it's known to be the biggest island in the area so the very few other survivors that um, are around they manage to a few of them start approaching the island and start spiraling inward and they join the society which is sort of somewhat headed by Mel and Daphne which is a very curious situation because you know you've got Mel who is an islander and Daphne who is a white English girl so you know it's a bit of a curious sort of um, leadership situation to say the least and the characters that they interact with are interesting developed because you've got obviously different views some of them don't necessarily think that Daphne and Mel should be you know in the position there are some people realize actually that the only ones who actually seems to know what's going on and it's an interesting character development for both Mel and Daphne and the rest of the characters and it, the book works rather well because of it and the other thing that works rather well because of the characters is the situation and the world that they are in this is Victorian era well um, Earth basically um, now this island nation is a kind of a stereotypical um, very primitive nation you know, if you read other books or watch older films sometimes you, you know there's that very fairly unpleasant stereotype of you know the unintelligent natives who need you know the white man to lead them out of um, being primitive and you know they need to sort of uplift them into you know good society and well manners and that sort of thing and the book is questioning that using obviously humour and sarcasm but also some serious points and he's saying actually yeah what happened during Victorian era and before about you know the whole idea of empire mostly was absolutely stupid and really shouldn't have happened for the most part as most people would agree and the setting of this island where it's the stereotypical island but it's been devastated so the, the little you know stereotypical huts have been damaged you've got a little inlets where you've got fish and crabs and um, that sort of thing all this stuff is there but it's all damaged and it's, the island's a mess basically a bit of a wreck and they've got to learn to survive on this island and learn what's changed on the island because Mal knows his island yeah the island that he used to know the island's somewhat changed because of course the tsunami does enormous damage you know trees buildings have been ripped up moved or just disappeared um there are now big pools of water where there never used to be that sort of thing so it's the environment plays an important part and obviously on the island there are remains of you know ancient you know, tribal sites and uh, customs and that sort of thing which that does play a significant part as well which I'm not going to say how but it does and it's an interesting situation let's say with the island with how they've got to learn to adapt and live on the island and live with each other and frankly that leads into some of the main ideas and themes of the book which are quite simply the idea of if your world is devastated would you try to make a new one how would you make a new one and basically how do you make a society how do you make a nation and how do you get the different sets of people disparate people how do you get them to interact and actually work together long enough to not just argue because people uh, tend to argue a lot to work together for change and actually build something better than you know what any one person can do in a rather selfish manner so you need to get everybody focusing on the bigger picture and not just focusing on their own personal needs and it's an interesting one 
and one that is questioned with both humour and sarcasm but also some deep thought and this is um, we mean considering the main characters are children this is a children's fantasy although it's got some very deep and meaningful points that would certainly make you think it certainly made me think the ideas of nation society are ones that Tipa is wrote about in the Discord books for instance and his other books but in this this is the focus it is about society what makes society what needs to be part of society and frankly what could be left behind because they've got um, the idea of the old society of the island but they've got a chance of essentially saying like right, well there's barely anybody left from the old island that really remember it so you know, maybe we could for instance not um, have all these traditions and rituals that we do I mean I mean we have them where I live in the UK you know traditions and you know daily little things that we do because it's just what's always been done but a lot of them are pretty pointless and actually are really inefficient you know I'm not a traditionalist in that way you know I don't hang on to the past I may much guys if something doesn't work then scrap it I don't care about tradition at all um, so this also deals very lightly with monarchy and that sort of thing as well which I'm not a particular um, big person on monarchy it's nice I suppose but it's actually not needed and so it's interesting questions it brings up and the way he actually asks them and indeed he gives you not the full answers but he gives you certainly some things to think about and he certainly makes you think well if this was happening maybe this could be an answer or at least it could lead you to a possible solution it's an interesting one and one that i really liked and i was actually really impressed by this book overall so in summary this is a really well written book by T. Budget. obviously i pretty much always sell anything related to T. Budget because i'm a big fan of his it's got some interesting ideas, interesting characters and the themes of society which are again for T. Budget, ones that you've mentioned before and we'll mention again after this book but ones that are important and ones that are well discussed and he knows how to talk about these things he's sort of all for that he can write about bigger issues and humour and significant points together to really make you think and I would recommend this book especially if you fell out it's worth it but it's a well written book in general and overall I would heavily recommend this book so with that said that is it for this review if you've read Nation by Tate or you would like to then please leave a comment and we can have a talk about it or obviously if you've got any questions about the book then again leave a comment and I'll answer to the best of my ability I'm no expert on it but you know I can try and um, the Goodreads link to this book as well as my social media links can be found in the description box below as always and with that said that is it for this video so thank you for watching and I'll see you another day bye for now